All right, guys, welcome back. This is going to be the third residence video, and this one's going to be mainly just examples and a little bit more um, talking about the finer points maybe of resonance. And again, just to guys, for you guys to get more practice with curved arrows, formal charge, all that sort of stuff. All right, so let's get into it. So here we have the structure, and I'm asking you to draw the resonance form of it, a resonance form of it. All right. So, and also you guys should know that I'm asking, even though it's not written, I asked you to draw the resonance because you see those, that arrow. You see a double-headed arrow that's just a, telling you to draw the resonance structure. And so, how do we draw the resonance structure of this, all right? What's going to be a good resonance structure? What's a bad resonance structure? Well, the first thing you should do is uh, look at the atoms that you have in that structure. All right, you want to really look at um, any car uh, the carbons, nitrogens, oxygens that connected with pi bonds or uh, lone pairs. Those are going to be the ones of interest. All right, and so the key trend is that the more electronegative your atom is, the better it's able to stabilize a negative charge. So what does that mean? If we have our periodic table, right, this, you guys should know from Genichem, or if you don't, it's fine. You could, I mean, it's pretty quick to memorize that electronegativity increases as you go from the bottom left to the top right of the periodic table, okay? And uh, so that means something like oxygen versus carbon, oxygen is going to be more electronegative. And so that translates to an oxygen with a negative charge, right? Oxygen with a negative charge is much more stable than the carbon with a negative charge, okay? And so that's a really important thing to remember, okay? And so let's look at this. So we have here an oxygen double bonded all right so that's probably gonna that might be able to participate in resonance we'll have to look at the other part of the molecule all right and we also have over here two carbons connected through double bond all right and if we look this carbon is exactly uh, adjacent it's connected to both that double bond and also it has the possibility of moving that double bond over here all right because remember we can only move a distance we can only move around one carbon all right so let's think of how it's going to happen we have here an oxygen and like i just said oxygens can better stabilize negative charges all right so we have a couple options of what we can do so let's think it through that oxygen has two lone pairs so we essentially have two options. We can bring down a lone pair, and we can do this, okay? Or we can bring a double bond up, a pi bond up, and we would get this. Okay, so two possibilities, which one is best? Let's start with looking at this one. The oxygen has a positive charge, okay, and it's got three bonds, all right? Now the oxygen octet is fine because it still has a total of eight electrons, but the problem is this carbon over here, right? It has, if you look at it, it has one, two, three, four, five bonds, right? That's carbon can only have four bonds because that'll total eight electrons. So this is too many bonds. So this can't work because we're just gonna be breaking the octet, that carbon. You don't wanna break the octet of the carbon, all right? So let's look at our other option. This should have a negative charge, sorry. So let's look at this option over here. We kicked up a double uh, pi bond 
and now that oxygen has a negative charge, and the carbon right here is a positive charge. Okay, well, we know that the oxygen can stabilize a negative charge. So if it's a question of negative charge on the carbon versus negative charge on the oxygen, it's better to have a negative charge on the oxygen. And it's better than our only other alternative, which was this, because it would shatter the octet of the carbon. All right, so that's a possible resonance structure of that molecule. Can we draw any others? Well, we still have this right here, that double bond. So let's see, can we make it participate in resonance in any way? Well, we ha it's connected to that one carbon, and we see that this pi, we can again move pi bond to pi bond. It's that one of those legal moves, right? Because we're only still moving a distance of, we're only moving exactly around one carbon. And it has that positive charge on this carbon. So we can draw an arrow going from here, sorry, going from here to here, pi bond to pi bond. So we keep what we had before. But now the only problem is, the only difference is we have the pi bond there. So that means um, this carbon becomes neutral now, right? Because now it has, um, if you calculate its formal charge, it has four bonds. So it's got formal charge of zero. Whereas before, when it was here, had three bonds and no lone pairs, formal charge of plus one. And so, are we done? Nope, because we have to look at what happened to this carbon. We just removed that double bond and shifted it. So while the double bond is still connected to this carbon, it's not connected to that carbon. So now we gotta rethink what our formal charge is. All right, and now remember, it had one hydrogen here because it was already connected to a double bond. So we still have that one hydrogen, but now we don't have any lone pairs and we only have three total bonds. One hydrogen bond, two carbon-carbon bonds. And so if we calculate the formal charge, since carbon has four valence electrons normally, this is going to have a formal charge of plus one. All right, so that's a second resonance structure. So those are two good resonance structures, and those are um, th that is my method of going through resonance structures. It's always easy to just look at your options and uh, seeing which one works, which one doesn't. Let's go to a different example. All right, now don't get nervous when you see large molecules. All right, a lot of the times they're thrown at you just to kind of get you a little bit nervous, but if you just keep a calm head and think it through, you'll be fine, all right? So let's see what we have. We have that oxygen, and remember it's got two lone pairs. We need to draw a resonance structure, all right? If we look, the carbon it's connected to has a plus charge. And so that means it only has those three bonds, one, two, three, and no hydrogen, because if there was a fourth bond to a hydrogen, it would be neutral. So we have three bonds there. It's electron deficient at the moment. Carbon only has six electrons connected to it. It doesn't have a full octet. So we can draw a resonance structure, right? How can we do it? Well, what are our options in this case? The uh, carbon here can't, we can't originate any electron movement from there simply because it's deficient. There aren't any lone pairs and there aren't any pi bonds. But the oxygen has some lone pairs, so we can start from there. And we can only essentially move here, right? This is going to be our lone pair to pi bond. We can't move here because this carbon has three hydrogens, and that will be one bond too many. And uh, yeah, we will be breaking the octet, so we can only go here 
So let's draw the arrow. It's going to come from one weld pair to that bond. We draw what you know didn't change. All right, and now we brought down one pair to form a pi bond. And now if we look at our carbon, it has four bonds. That's a formal charge of zero. If we look at our oxygen, it has three bonds and a lone pair. That's a formal charge of plus one. If that didn't make sense, I would pause the video um, and try to work through it yourself. Okay? Um, and of course, you, you need any help, feel free to always email me or a TA. So, uh, yeah, so let's go on to the next example. Here we have what's known as an amide, right? It's, this is a really important functional group. And if you guys go on to biochem, um, amides uh, are going to be pretty important when it comes to proteins um, and peptides and stuff like that. All right, so let's look at what we have. Now we're introducing a nitrogen and an oxygen at the same time. Now keep in mind, nitrogen is drawn as neutral. If you look at the amount of electrons nitrogen has in the, veil, in the periodic table, it's five. And this nitrogen has three bonds, right? That means it has that lone pair, All right? Just so you guys know, I would get very comfortable being able to determine if something has a lone pair or not, uh, just by looking at it, or formal charge, just by kind of doing it in your head. It'll get much easier as the semester goes on, I promise. So let's look at what we can do here. Um, we can either start at the oxygen or nitrogen. I'm going to start at the oxygen just because uh, I find oxygens a little bit easier to start out with and people get more are more comfortable usually with them. So what can we do? We saw from the last exa uh, two examples ago that we can either, uh, that we can't really kick down a lone pair because we're going to have three, a triple bond in oxygen, and that's going to break the octet of the carbon it's bound to. So we can only bring it up, bring one of the pi bonds up. So let's try it out. Bring a pi bond up. So we're going to have this. Three lone pairs now. And now this carbon has positive charge because he, we look at the original structure, that carbon had one bond there, second bond, and three and four, right? And so now, when we look at here, it only has one, two, three. So if we just do the formal charge really quickly, three bonds in no lone pairs, that's going to be a plus, uh, positive one formal charge. All right. Oh, and I forgot the hydrogen there. So that's exact. That's one possible resonance structure. All right? Can we do anything else? Well, let's see. This nitrogen over here has a lone pair. All right, and we know from our rules we can turn a lone pair into a pi bond. And the distance is the same. I mean, the distance works. So let's take a look. We can take this lone pair bring it down there, right, because this carbon here is deficient, it doesn't have a, uh, a full octet, so we can make another bond there, that'll work, so keep everything the same, alright, so we put a double bond there now, right, a new pi bond, so let's look at the formal charge of the carbon, the carbon has uh, this carbon has exactly four bonds, one, two, three, four, okay, and no lone pairs. If we just did the calculation on that, we'd have a zero formal charge, neutral, and if we look at the nitrogen, it has one, two, three, and there's also that fourth bond to that hydrogen, okay. And it has no lone pairs. So in this case, I'm actually going to do it because I don't know. I don't think I've ever shown you guys nitrogen formal charges. Um, and if I did, I might just be forgetting. So we have 
five is the normal valence electrons of nitrogen, and we have four bonds plus zero electrons as lone pairs. That's just going to be plus one. So this nitrogen gets a positive formal charge. Okay, so that's a second resonance structure we can draw. Now, can we do anything else? Um, as it stands, you can't, because anything else would interfere with a single bonds. Uh, and again, I said we can't break them. And just a quick note with the amide. You see how I drew that H directly attached to that nitrogen? I didn't draw a bond. Um, that's just something that is pretty common with nitrogens. Uh, or actually, really, you can draw structures that way because it's implied that there is a bond between that nitrogen and hydrogen. All right? Just uh, wanted to make sure you guys got that. And so, uh, if you have any questions about this, please uh, feel free to email me. Again, my email is on the um, review video section. You know, there's always the Facebook group. Or uh, if you guys see me, obviously, in person, feel free to ask. Oh, and, of course, obviously, reach out to the TAs. Um, and please do the practice um, the practice problem sets that I've been making. I'm trying to make them as close to the test as possible. Uh, and it will be very beneficial for you guys. Uh I would try to watch the videos first, then do the practice questions. And if you have any trouble with the practice questions, also, again, feel free to email me. I'll be happy to, uh, to help you guys out. All right. See you in the next video.